Now, next most important topic that we're going to discuss about is TestNG, which is one of the Java framework. So TestNG or JUnit are both same thing. As in, uh, if we talk about, uh, there are like specifically about the Java frameworks, there are two major Java frameworks. One is TestNG, one is uh, JUnit. So initially JUnit was used in the market a lot. Uh, I mean, these days as well, many developers are working on JUnit. But if I talk about the functionality of JUnit, it is very limited. Uh, like there are many li very limited features in JUnit as compared to TestNG, right? All the features that developers may require, they are there in uh, JUnit uh, framework. Whereas if we talk about uh, many components and many um, new features like uh, generating interactive reports and doing a number of other things, something called as uh, using some annotations. Now, what are annotations? In some time, it will be very much clear to you. But uh, like there are many things that JUnit don't provide us and is actually provided by TestNG, right? So functionality wise, both are same. But uh, in case of JUnit, at times you may need to write uh, a lengthy code, whereas uh, for the same code, there are utility methods available in TestNG through which uh, you need to write very less code while you are creating your test cases. So TestNG is basically a Java framework that can be used with Selenium, with Appium, with Rest Assured, uh, API automation, any Java framework that you are working on, you can integrate TestNG with that framework. Because uh, see, if you talk about Selenium or Appium or API, right, uh, when you execute uh, the code, let's say using Selenium only, we automate a website, right? So while you write a Selenium code and when you execute it using uh, the Java main method, you can only see the execution results, right? You will see the browser uh, will launch uh, and uh, it will perform action on a browser. But no matter if you have even written 500 lines of code, uh, Selenium API will not going to tell you that uh, out of 500 lines, there were somewhere around like 100 test cases out of which 80 are passed and 20 are fail, right? So Selenium or Appium or Rest Assured, these frameworks will not going to tell you the uh, like total count of test cases which are being executed, what all test cases are passed or what all test cases are failed. So these things are actually provided by these Java frameworks, right? JUnit, TestNG, these are uh, the frameworks which are already built. They, they provide you some functionality which will actually going to convert your existing code into test cases. And there are many other functionalities, features that it will actually going to provide you which will help you in managing your project, right? Which will tell you which test case to execute first, which test case to execute after after uh, uh, the second test or after the third test or if the third test is dependent on the second test and if second test fails then we should not run the third test or let's say if we want to create some uh, test suits which is like a collection of test cases so these are the things which are actually done in these uh, java frameworks which are not supported by uh, your other apis like selenium or appium right so uh, the lectures that we are going to study now are very important lectures and you can use TestNG in any of the Java framework, any of the Java project that you want to use, right? So if we are working on Selenium, uh, like we will be creating a couple of test cases uh, first in order to see how TestNG works. Now, before we get started with any, any integration like Selenium or Appium, will first be understanding the basic concept of test ng like how we need to configure test ng what all plugins are available right what all annotations are available what all uh, features that test ng provide we will first be understanding the basic architecture of test ng and then we're going to integrate uh, these apis with test ng to form up a uh, entire automation project right so let us uh, really quick get started with TestNG and uh, let us see where we need to download it. Uh, so TestNG, you can download it in two ways. One is the jar files, the dependencies. You can directly search for TestNG uh, over here, TestNG in your Maven repository. 
since we are working on the Maven project, you can download it directly. Uh, don't download the beta version. Download uh, the full-fledged version. That is 6.14.3. Copy this. Uh, go to your... Uh, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a separate project for TestNG. So I'll create a new Maven project. Create a simple project. Enter the group ID as com.w2a, artifact ID testng learning, your project name, right? Click on finish. And then inside your Maven project, you need to add dependencies tag and provide this dependency, right? So this, this is one way of doing it. Right, if you go over here in the Maven dependency, you'll see the test ng jars added to your project, right? The other way is to add a plugin. So plugin can be downloaded from uh, the test ng main website, that is test ng org, and go to download. So this is the Maven version, right? They have not updated it. The latest one is 6.14 that we recently added. And uh, the plugin uh, to Eclipse can be downloaded from here. So what you need to do, you just need to copy this URL. Copy this. And uh, go to Window. Sorry, go to Help. Click on Install New Software and paste this URL. That's it. Once you paste it, you'll see an option of Test TestNG. Select it. Uh, you need to click on next. It is showing as disable at my end. This is because I already have this plugin installed. Once you select it, you just need to click on next, next, and within it will gonna take few seconds and we're gonna install this plugin. Once it is installed, your Eclipse will be restarted. After that, you should be able to see TestNG as an inbuilt plugin. If you right click on your project, you'll find an option of TestNG over here, right? So the other thing that you can do is go to build path. Click on Add Libraries, click on Test NG, click on Next, and click on Finish. So if you open it, you'll get the same Test NG jars. So you can use the either way. I mean, either add a dependency or add this uh, uh, external jar file, right? So, but uh, installing a plugin is very important, right? Although uh, it may not help right now. But once we start writing the test cases, and once we have to create a test suit, then this plugin will definitely gonna help us, right? So just try doing this much configuration, and in the next lecture, we're gonna start with writing our test cases. Thank you.